On February 15, 2024, 11-year-old Audrey I. Cunningham from Livingston, Texas disappeared on her way to school. Audrey I. had left at 6.30 a.m. that morning. Neighbors would often see her walking the path to the bus stop accompanied by her dog but that morning, no one did. Audrey I. was usually home on time. Initially, no one panicked when she didn't arrive at her usual time, but as the hours passed and the sky darkened, her family knew something had gone wrong. At 5.30 p.m., when Audrey I still hadn't arrived home from school, her family contacted the local authorities. An Amber Alert was immediately issued on screens across the state, and a search was launched for Audrey I. Investigators realized there was likely foul play when it was discovered that Audrey I hadn't even gotten onto the school bus that morning. Livingston, Texas, where Audrey I lived with her grandparents, father, and other relatives, is a relatively tight-knit community. Everyone knew each other, and crimes against children are less common than they are in bigger cities like Houston. Audrey I and her family lived on a property near the shore of Lake Livingston. They had allowed a family friend to set up camp on their property. This friend was 42-year-old Don Stephen McDougall. He was close to the Cunninghams, especially Audrey, and would often take her to school. On the day she disappeared, he did just that. The last time Audrey I would ever be seen alive would be in the backseat of McDougall's vehicle as he allegedly took her to the bus stop. Initially, the search extended to the cluster of trees behind Audrey's property, which bordered the state park. It was theorized that perhaps Audrey I had simply gotten lost in the woods while getting distracted by an adventure to find animals in the area. The search would prove fruitless, so authorities turned to camera footage hoping to find a clue there. It was then that they spotted a dark blue 2003 Chevy Suburban, which belonged to McDougall. Authorities then put the word out to citizens using social media asking them to report any sightings of the vehicle on that day around the time that Audrey I had disappeared. Soon, tips came flooding in. On the day of Audrey's disappearance, Don McDougall was caught on camera at the local convenience store buying a lottery ticket. After that, he was seen visiting a mechanic off Highway 59. According to witnesses at the shop when McDougall stopped by, he was looking for a particular part for his car. However, there was something strange about him. He was covered in dirt and looked as though he'd been involved in a physical struggle. The next day, after authorities tracked him to the local shopping plaza and questioned him, he admitted that he had left the Cunningham property on that Thursday morning, February 15, with Audrey I in his vehicle but he lied about where the pair went from there. Unsurprisingly enough, early on in the investigation of Audrey's disappearance, McDougall was a person of interest. He had two prior convictions such as the enticement of a child, to which he had pleaded no contest. In 2020, he landed behind bars for harassment. He also had an outstanding warrant of aggravated assault for stabbing a man the previous year for which he was arrested on February 16, a day after Audrey's disappearance. The two felony counts he had been charged with were related to an incident in which McDougall had snuck into a 10-year-old child's bedroom during a family gathering and tried to remove her pants. Due to his plea, he only served two years for the incident and was never registered on the sex offenders database. It wasn't long before a wet children's backpack belonging to Audrey I was found at the Lake Livingston Dam close to the Cunningham home. Six days after she disappeared, after a search of Trinity River was conducted using expert divers, the body of Audrey I Cunningham was found. Her corpse had been weighed down using a rope tied to a rock. The rope was consistent with one described to have been seen in McDougall's car during a traffic stop two days earlier. Upon medical examination, it was determined that she had died from homicidal violence, which included blunt force trauma to the head. Officials revealed that it was the suspect's cell phone data as well as images circulating on social media that led them to pinpoint the whereabouts of Audrey's body. After the discovery, McDougall was charged with capital murder and held without bond. The Cunningham family was undoubtedly shocked and disgusted when they learned the details of McDougall's prior convictions, as well as the audacity he showed when he participated in the initial searches for their daughter. Don who was often tasked to watch over what the Cunningham family described as their little ray of sunshine was the one responsible for her death. No direct motive was given as to why he killed Audrey I. The family was criticized on social media for showing compassion and mercy to this formerly incarcerated man. Still, according to them, they didn't see anything wrong with offering him a second chance as a result of their faith.
Don Stephen McDougall's heinous act of violence against an innocent child shattered the illusion of safety and trust that the tight-knit Texas town once held dear and reminds us of the darkness that can lurk beneath the facade of familiarity and friendship.